ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to the studio this evening. So, as you can see, I'm going to try to paint this OSU sweatshirt. I apologize, I've only got it printed out in black and white, but since the colors are scarlet and gray, shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Uh, so, I'm using my M. Graham paint. You can see them there in the upper left, uh, I'm sorry, upper right hand corner. And I'm using a Da Vinci Petite Scree Squirrel um, Squirrel Mop paint brush. There it is. I am painting this on Daler Rowney uh, watercolor paper, 140 pound watercolor paper. Just being a little careful there to get around that label. So this is the first time I've tried to paint uh, anything like this. Uh, normally, if I do an article of clothing, it's very general on somebody's body in a painting of mine. They're very far away, very easy to paint, like one stroke of paint. This is the first time I've tried to paint anything that is uh, much more detail as far as clothes go. I think I'm gonna be able to do it. There shouldn't, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, I do have some nice uh, shadows in the body of this where uh, you can see in the reference photo where there are some big wrinkles and whatnot. Uh, so that's going to be my big challenge in this. The gray that I'm using here is a mixture of Payne's gray and neutral tint, just going for a very, very center of the road gray as my background color. And then we're going to come back into it and paint any of those uh, shadows or ridges or ruffles, whatever they're called, uh, uh, one on the second go around. So just being careful to try to stay in the lines on this to uh, not mess it up any. Uh, I'm probably being a little overly careful. I don't need to be quite that careful but I am going to be that careful well see right there I already painted over a little spot a little triangle in the center there that didn't need to be painted over the only place that I'm going to have to be super careful in reality is right around the letters that's by, going to be by far the hardest things to get around and I'm trying to do it right now I hope that this brush is going to allow me to get in there, but I don't think it's going to. I'm going to paint right along this arc where it's at the top of the letters, and I'll paint along the bottom of the letters, and I'll go in with a, with a tiny brush and get inside all of those letters to really make that uh, look nice in there. There we go, and you can see I'm just going nice and slow. Going about half the speed that I'm talking at, or at least it seems like that. A little more Payne's gray in there. I'm not trying to necessarily to keep this the same color of gray throughout the body of this sweater, uh, but I'm trying to keep it close. But if one area uh, has a little bit more blue from the Payne's gray or it's a little purpler from the neutral tint. I'm not going to worry about it too much. That's part of the fun of watercolors and maybe that's an imperfection in the fabric or the dyeing of the fabric. I don't know. I'll just say it is and go with it. But uh, in reality, when you look at it, you're going to see a nice big gray sweater and you're not going to notice if one spot's a little bluer or a little purpler or anything like that. And there we go, I can paint a little bit more quickly here in the body of the sweatshirt. There we go. As I'm watching this back, it does seem like I'm going exceedingly slow. I painted this several months ago. Uh, you may have seen it on my Instagram account or Twitter account. It's been up there. I actually had it for sale on Etsy and it eventually sold. 
from there. I hope it found a fantastic home. I'm sure it's found a great new home. I do know that it did go to Columbus, Ohio. So that is nice. Kind of it's going kind of back home. Given that it is an Ohio State sweatshirt. There we go. And this is a Da Vinci brush also. Uh, same manufacturer as the mop brush I had been using. This one is a squirrel. I'm sorry. This one is a sable round brush. If I had to guess, I would say this is a number two, but I'm not exactly certain. But just being careful to go around the letters and uh, not inside. If I go over a little bit, I guess it's not the end of the world. The red that's going on it is fairly strong red as long as this gray lightens up like it should because Payne's gray lightens quite a bit when it dries. Then the red would go over it without too much trouble at all. And that about does it for the first layer of gray that I've got on this painting. Just going to clean up a little bit so we don't see any tide lines. All right, all right. Now we've got to be brave for just a second and think about how we want to do this, put in uh, these uh, shadow lines where the fabric is ruffled up a little bit. And I'm going to start, well, where am I going to start? I'm going to start in an area that I think is a little bit drier than others. And we'll go and do that first, making my paint just a bit thicker so that if it does run a little bit, it's not going to run all that much. It shouldn't run much at all. Underneath the collar here a little bit. Maybe give this just a bit of dimension if we can. Oh, you can see the top of my head. That's very nice. Well, not all gray. I've got a little gray in there, but uh, that gray probably matches the, uh, <laughs> the gray that's in the sweatshirt. How about that? All right, and a little bit on the seam, maybe here and there, where you think there's gonna be a bit of a shadow line. Oh yes, that's quite nice hair there. It's nice to know that I'm not balding, at least not in the front. And I'm gonna blend that color out a little bit. I wanna see that there's a line there, but I don't want it to be a hard line. And I'm not sure what I'm doing there. Just getting that, oh, getting it off of the label. I went onto the label maybe a little bit more than I wanted to. I'm going to take a little bit of that color back off of there. Dab that off like that. Okay, that'll have to do. Now, where can we find our next shadow that we need to paint? Right here in the armpit area. And all of this is going to be very similar. We're going to put a dark, basically a dark stripe onto the sweatshirt. And uh, then I'm going to take a little bit of paint back off of it. There it goes. Something like that. And, and flip it around. And a little bit on the other side. And then you've got a nice soft uh, area on both sides, there's no hard line, uh, and and it should look like the fabric is bent that little bit or ruffled a little bit. There we go. I'm putting on a, a nice uh, heavy layer of paint here, and by doing it this way, I've got to work a little bit faster. I can do it this way 
and try to work a little fast and blend it out on both sides. Or I can uh, put it on a little bit lighter and uh, go back and do uh, two layers of, of, of paint if I want. Either way will suffice just as well as any other way. But there you go, now you can see that there's a, a big ruffle in the edge of that sleeve, it looks like. There, just smooth that out. And we are on our way. I think I still own the very first Ohio State sweatshirt that I purchased. I can, in fact, I can tell you, I got it at Long's Bookstore. Uh, Long's is no longer around. But I bought it at Long's Bookstore, and I only wore it for a long time on game days. And uh, it's stuck with me low these many years. I don't wear it much anymore. The cuffs have all worn out. <laughs> the stitching is coming out in most places. Uh, but I just can't bear to throw it out. It's such a great sweatshirt that uh, I keep it and pull it out on special occasions. Maybe if there's a, a football bowl game, I'll pull it out for a bowl game. But not too often do I pull it out. All right. I'm just I'm trying to turn the picture so you can see exactly what I see while I try to put in my low lights and you can see that right here there's a nice low light maybe I didn't get one that one quite as big as I should have but it's going in there nonetheless There we go. But you can see how it's beginning to get some definition to the shirt. It's beginning to look like there's something there. It's a lot of going back into that dark color. And again, that dark color is a mixture between Payne's Gray and Neutral Tint. And that's it for the most of this painting. Not a whole lot else. All right, maybe it looks like that uh, that sleeve, that cuff on that sleeve, maybe has a little arc to it. Just a little bit of room behind it there. Or hopefully maybe it will when we're done with it anyways. There's something like that. It's a little bit of a nice shadow right around that. Keep working that, and it's going to look better and better the longer I do it. And as we begin to put in more and more shadows, these bigger shadows, the longer ones up the entire uh, length of this sweatshirt, uh, it's going to make everything else look a little bit better and a little bit better. All right, now where is our next shadow? We got one under here a little bit. And again, the same thing, it's the same process, repeating over and over again. You're going to look at the reference photo, determine where you need a low light, where you need a dark. Uh, grab a little bit of paint, put it on in that general area. And then blend it uh, off on the side. Here you'll be able to see this one really well. Nice big area of paint. It's going to end up being about half as dark as that by the time you blend it out on both sides. And here I'm just starting. Slightly damp brush. Not super wet, but not totally dry. Want to keep uh, just a damp edge on that so the paint doesn't run all over 
but just damp enough that you can lift the edge off of it. There it is. I'm not going to come down to the bottom here and re-darken this. I guess that Payne's Gray really did dry a lot lighter. In fact, looking at the whole sweatshirt, the whole sweatshirt really did look a lot darker when we started. Now that it's all nice and dry, it's gotten much, much lighter. So we're just going to have to re-darken that little bit there. Just like that, right around that same area. And that's going to leave us with that nice, nice fold on there again. There it is. We kind of have two ruffles on that sleeve now. A ruffle. I'm not sure if ruffle is the right word for it, but we have two areas kind of in shadow on that on that sleeve now. Just going to darken those up a little bit. And again, blend it right on down. Just bring it out. Just, you know, Bob Ross would say, two hairs and some air on there. You're just barely touching the edge of that to allow it to, to blend right on down. Got another little spot I see, obviously, right up there. Just the tiniest little bit. And again, about half of that paint that you put on there comes right back off when you do it this way. There it is. And this Daler Rowney paper is wood pulp paper. If you don't stay on top of it, uh, there is a chance that it will continue to bleed and run across the wood fibers. <clears throat> Excuse me, that is one of the differences I've noticed in wood pulp paper and cotton fiber paper. Uh, you get them both equally as wet and charge some paint onto it and the, <clears throat> the cotton fibers do a good job of slowing the uh, dissipation of paint through the fibers. The wood pulp just kind of passes the paint along and it can really bleed quite a long way. So it's vitally important you control the amount of water that you have on your brush and that you stay on top of it if it's too much to keep it from continuing to bleed and to bleed and to bleed across your painting. <clears throat> All right, I'm just fiddling with that one a little bit. I actually think that color was a little too dark still. Uh, I can play with it. I can futz with it a little bit. It'll get some of that out. There's a little bit of a <clears throat> shadow right in there. Just put that in, and I'm going to blend the edges. You won't see much of that, but there you go. But it does what, what is there kind of does uh, add a bit of niceness to it. Now you're going to see more of it. Now, now more of it's going to stay. And there's more wrinkles on this thing now. As we do this a little bit more and a little bit more, and each time we put another one of these little wrinkles on there, we do gain a little bit of life in this painting. Already you can see the difference between the left hand sleeve and the right hand sleeve. One is very flat and one has a lot of life in it. So let's continue on the other sleeve here and see what we can do with this one. I mean, there shouldn't be too much we have to think about here because um, a lot of our reference is coming directly off of our reference photo. 
even though we're not trying to duplicate it, it's going to give us some good guidelines as to where we need to put these shadows. All we have to do is be smart enough to follow those guidelines. Um, <clears throat> hopefully you guys are all a little smarter than me. If you try to take on a, <laughs> a video like this, you'll follow it a little bit more closely than I do. I'm not sure what I'm doing up there around that collar. It looked good to me. I'm supposed it's going to look even better now. I'm just going to take that on around, really. Maybe there's a big stitch in there. It really comes down. There we go. For whatever reason, it was bothering me. There it is. And redarken on the inside of that neckline. So, yeah, let me see if I can keep my hand out of the wet paint. That would be a first for me. I don't, <laughs> I don't do that all that well. I love getting my hand in there. I don't love it. It seems like I love it because I do it enough. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so the more we put on here, the more color we add on to this, or the more paint we put on here, not more color because we're working with all the same colors here. But the more we do, the more we add on this sweatshirt really does come to life uh, it's looking a lot better all we're gonna do is keep going with it we are getting there all right come on Michael oh have the idea of what we want to do with this sweatshirt. I'm going to put it in a little bit of higher gear here and power through the rest of this video. Let's see how it goes. We've seen the basic techniques. You've seen how it can work on one arm of this sweatshirt. Let's see now what we can do with the rest of it. I guess I'm going to darken up a little bit under this fold here. There we go. Something like that. That looks pretty good. Almost just like that picture. Although I'm not really trying to make this a photorealistic representation of that sweatshirt. But I am trying to stay fairly true to it. I don't like trying to make a photo realistic uh, representation of things. I think that puts a lot of undue pressure on you to make it quote quote perfect and I don't think we need to do that to ourselves as artists. Uh, it, watercolor painting can be difficult, it can be frustrating. There's a lot to do at any one time so I prefer to focus on using the reference photo as a reference and trying to get the essence of that picture into what I'm painting rather than trying to duplicate exactly what it is I'm seeing. So that's what I'm doing here. And I think this is going to turn out uh, really well. There we go. Just putting some darks on. There, there we go, and you can see, you can see this uh, this uh, sleeve on this side is starting to come to life too. Got some more uh, energy to it, more than just being that flat color that it was. All right, mixing up a lot of paints, trying to be brave at this point, and here we go, right up the side, and gonna blend that out. Like I said, gotta really be brave. At this point because um, if this doesn't turn out then everything we've done up to this point is kind of moot <laughs> but there we go we'll run that right up there and I'm gonna smooth that on both sides all the way up as high as I can get it to go up there just stopping at the letters There, that's a nice line. And it's it's continuing to run, so I'm going to go back to it. I'm 
going back and going back and keep making sure to dry off my brush right up there to make sure that that edge uh, ends up staying where I want it to stay. There we go, I got a little crinkle down there and then I'll extend that up above the letters. Something just about like that. And that one by itself doesn't exactly look like much of anything other than a line, but I think when we get the next big one on, here it comes right here. Then it's going to start to look a little bit more like it's supposed to. It looks like it's a sweatshirt with a big 11 on the front at this point. <laughs> we'll have to take care of that in just a second. There we go. Got some nice deep uh, fabric in there. The darker it is, of course, if you're doing this, in the darker you make that, the deeper that that fold or that ruffle would be in there. So if you make it light, it's really thin. If you make it dark, it's really deep. Well, there, now we can see it's starting to look like something. I put another one over here somewhere. <clears throat> All right. And we've taken the body of this sweatshirt, which was flat just a moment ago, and we've added these big grooves to it. There's one side, here's the other side, just making sure that that is nice and thin and feathered all the way out here. A little bit there in the center. Not much at all. And a little tiny one on the side over there apparently, there it is. Just drop that on there. All right, we're about done with the body of this shirt. We're coming up to the lettering in not too distant future here. We'll see how we can do with that. There we go. This has got a big hem on there. A little bit of shadow down the side. Of course, it's not totally flat over there. It's got to go all the way down. Come on, Michael. Right on down. And a little bit on this side. Make it not so flat. Well, there we go. Good, good, good. Now it looks like I painted a black and white picture. <laughs> it really does. All right, a few touch-ups here and there to give it maybe a little bit of extra, extra body to look at the way this thing is folded. There we go. I could go around that whole sleeve where it's folded there if I wanted to. I think if I were to do this again, I probably would do that. But a little extra here and there. And you can see as it's drying, uh, there's some light and some dark in uh, where I feathered out the colors. Uh, and that's helping to give the look of some texture onto the surface of this sweatshirt. I don't think that was uh, readily apparent when I was painting it, but as it's dried, you can see that color change come up a little bit more. All right, there we go. Oh, finally going into some red. 
Looks like a little pyrol red, maybe a little bit of uh, permanent alizarin crimson. Whoops. There we go. That's not real wording on there. That's just some squiggle lines to make it look like the, uh, or make it look like a, oh, I forget what you even call that, the, the lapel, not the lapel, label, make it look like a label. All right, I'm just drawing in, right? Just doing everything I can to stay inside the lines. This O doesn't look like much at the beginning, but I promise you uh, as the lettering comes along, as I do more and more, the letters are gonna look better and better. All right, there's the O and the H. Moving on to the eye, and I am turning it just to get what I think is going to be the best uh, angle to paint this at. And there's more of my hair. That's very exciting to see. <laughs> at least I combed it that day. All right, we don't have much longer to go in here. If you don't follow me on Instagram and Twitter, uh, I've got links down below. Uh, please give me a follow there. I do post a lot of artwork there that you don't see in video form. Um, I've got links to my Etsy store where I've got some things for sale, about 20 paintings for sale. This shirt has already been sold, so you won't find this one there. Uh, but, but check it out. I've got some nice stuff up there. I've got a link to my website. I try to update that at least once a week. I uh, talk about different things on my blog. I've got a couple reviews. Uh, I am an Amazon affiliate, so I've got these products that I use. I think everything in this painting, or almost everything in this painting, is there. If you like these products or you want to give them a try, you can uh, get them from there. Uh, also, if you feel so inclined to make a donation, I've got a link two uh, donation sites on my website. All donations are greatly appreciated. All right, painting the second T on this one. I'm not going to outline the letters in black. I'm not going to outline them in white. I'm trying to be very careful and keep within the lines. So red it is on this only. And I think the shirt came out pretty good. It does look like it's laying there with some bumps and ridges and whatnot on it. There it is. I had a great time painting this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.